Well, Spurs fans have got used to this place. Mixed feelings about it, I'm sure, as the season has gone on. It hasn't been successful for them in European competition. And those Spurs supporters have come here today confident that they can beat the team that they hope to overhaul in the league by the end of the season. I'm delighted to say that I've been joined for commentary on today's exciting semi-final by somebody who wore the colours of both clubs with distinction. But Clive, I don't think you'll mind me saying that you do have a little bit more Spurs in your heart, which you'll try to hide today. Oh yes, I'll be totally impartial, there's no doubt about that, but uh, a really exciting semi-final. Two of the best teams in the country at the moment. Spurs probably edging it for me in the form that they come into this game. But Chelsea at the moment just need to bounce back and that's why it makes it such an intriguing semi-final. People talk about the psychological effect on the weeks to come in the Premier League race that this tie can have. Is it a one-off or will that be a factor? No, this is a one-off. This is the FA Cup, the best cup competition in the world. It's uh, just a one game where you don't want to lose. There's no place for losers here at Wembley in a semi-final. Both sets of players ready to take the field. Wembley Stadium, in terms of the seats, is not jam-packed yet, but it will be by kickoff. And we understand there could be a record attendance in place today since Wembley was rebuilt at the turn of the millennium. Martin Atkinson, you can see at the top of your picture, he's the referee, and it's an interesting choice. He was also the ref the last time these sides met in the semi-final here five years ago. Chelsea 5, Spurs 1, a game that was notable for the second goal that made it 2-0 to Chelsea. The ball blocked on the line, but a goal was given. Remember, those were the days before goal line technology. Chelsea won them to score another three, of course, but that had a huge bearing on the way that the game was played out. game atmosphere for a huge game. It feels like the final itself, which is why some people don't like semi-finals being played at Wembley, but it is good that we can have a stadium that could accommodate upwards of 90,000 people. Terrific noise. Spurs have got one giant flag. Chelsea have thousands and thousands of individual blue ones waving in their end. Well, there has been a lot of talk about the Chelsea lineup all day, and the most well-worn rumours have proved to be true. No Diego Costa, no Aidan Hazard, and the team shows five changes from last weekend at Manchester United. Thibaut Courtois back in goal after illness, Marcus Alonso likewise on the left, Starts for William, Batshuayi and Ake, picked ahead of John Terry to be the replacement for the unwell Gary Cahill. Yeah, and Ake only having played two FA Cup ties since coming back from that loan of Bournemouth alongside Luis and Aspilicueta at the back. And for me, Batshuayi, what can he do? Limited chances this season, big semi-final appearance for him. team has also been talked about plenty with Maurizio Pochettino going with the 3-4-3 formation that was successful against Chelsea in January. Kieran Trippier comes in for Kyle Walker on the right as has been the way all cup run and to accommodate the informed Son into the system he'll play on the left of the midfield four in place of Ben Davis. Yes a system used by Maurizio Pochettino in that victory against Spurs so I think that's why he's gone back to it the only difference being Trippier as right wing back Son as a left wing back, Harry Kane back from injury and back to goal scoring form really is going to be a fascinating encounter. Really close one to call, remember we can go all the way to penalties, it's got to be decided today. Hasn't been replays in the FA Cup semi-finals for a few years now. And a little tweak these days in that if it does go to extra time, a fourth substitute can be used if desired by either boss. What a big game for Mickey Batshuayi. Antonio Conte has said this season he'll get his chance when he's ready. Well, presumably that day is now. Either that or he really has fallen out with Diego Costa, who's gone six games without a goal ever since talk began to grow about a potential move to the Chinese Super League. 
Now, before we start today, we will observe a minute's applause in tribute to the former Aston Villa, Middlesbrough and England defender Ugo Ehiog, Spurs under-23 coach, who I'm sure you'll be aware, tragically, suddenly collapsed and died with a suspected heart attack in the early hours of Friday morning. And our thoughts are, of course, with all those at Tottenham who've worked so closely with him, with all the young players he's been mentoring over the last few years, and, of course, with all of his countless friends and family. Ugo Ehiog. presence for so many years a teammate of the England manager Gareth Southgate at Aston Villa and at Middlesbrough and the Spurs family already miss him deeply Chelsea against Tottenham Hotspur for a place in the 2017 Emirates FA Cup final it doesn't get much better than this on the whistle of referee Martin Atkinson gets the game underway Spurs looking to extend a run of ten games unbeaten winning all the last eight that they've played Chelsea meanwhile have stumbled a little bit in recent weeks they have lost two of their last four matches can they recover can they regroup can they strike a blow to their only title challenges but more importantly can they book a date here again the end of next month and it certainly could be all about the way the teams start and Spurs in the Champions League campaign have found it difficult to have real intensity and pace to their game in the early stages at Wembley so you can see Chelsea pressing and making it difficult for Spurs to really control the tempo of this game and Spurs at Wembley this season in Europe won one drawn one lost two the dimensions of the playing surface well the Wembley pitch is five metres longer and one metre wider than White Hart Lane. Doesn't sound a lot, but it does make a difference. Spurs, though, have started on the front foot and have forced a corner. Kane playing the ball against Nathan Ake. Guy, it is difficult to explain, but it is also a different surface. It's softer, it's not as quick and slick as that that they play on at White Hart Lane week in, week out. Christian Eriksen with the corner. Won't bother with the surface for this one. Floated into Alderweireld, who only just missed it. Moses carried it away. Kante couldn't find, find Pedro. And that sold Ali short. It was well picked off by Azpilicueta, who feeds William. It's a lovely first touch from William. The cross came Dembele, importantly so for Spurs, and Lloris prevents the corner. What a lovely touch of the ball that was from William. He's off and running. He certainly is, but it was a great interception from Aspilicueta. The ball played square too early, wasn't of enough pace. He stepped in and set William off. Great pace down the right-hand side. And eventually, Lloris, as you rightly say, has to deny Chelsea that corner opportunity. Hugo Lloris is playing only his second-ever FA Cup tie. His last was a 2 0 defeat at Arsenal in the third round over three years ago. Michel Vaughan out with a knee injury, or... Dutchman might well have been selected as he has been in the cup all season. Yeah, I think that would have been the case, but for uh, Vaughan's injury. That's Pilaqueta, who is captain for the day for Chelsea. Club captain on the bench, 
team captain this season, ruled out with a stomach bug, Gary Cahill. Eriksson, Kane, picked off by Ake, really good challenge. Flicked by Batshuayi, Pedro, Spurs trying to catch him, he is caught. And the decision is a foul and a free kick. Toby Alderweireld just outside the box, and he's got a yellow card too. Yeah, he has to, in the end, make a lunging challenge on the edge of that box, and Pedro just toes it away from him in time, but it was an exquisite touch from Batshuayi to set Pedro away. And you see Alderweireld clearly hooking Pedro to the ground. Can have no complaints about one committing the foul, giving away the free kick and receiving that yellow card. We'll see, with this free kick, whether it proves to be a booking worth taking, a goal-saving challenge, possibly. Unless Chelsea could conjure something up here. Spurs skipper Lloris has to decide whether it will be Willian, Marcus Alonso is walking away, or a David Luiz power blast. Well, Luiz does like to take these free kicks with a straight run-up and almost a side-foot connection through the middle of the ball which makes the ball deviate in the air. William also looks well prepared. William was Chelsea's free kick king last season. It's going to be William. It's brilliant from William! It's only taken Chelsea four minutes. Barely a flicker from Antonio Conte. Plenty going on amongst those Chelsea fans though. Stepped up, Williams' strike was spectacular. Chelsea won, Tottenham on Spurn Hill. Well, the perfect start for Chelsea and for William. Louise takes a back step and William fires it round. It is the side for Hugo Louise to cover. He strikes it well. You can see there's a lot of bodies in front of Hugo Louise. He won't be seeing that too late, but that has to be his responsibility on that side of the wall. Trying to push himself off, trying to get the spring to get across. But it was upon him too quickly. There is the tiniest of deflections. And I don't think Lloris was getting there anyway. No, clearly that was a side that William was trying to put that ball in. He executed it perfectly. The FA Cup semi-final is off. Chelsea have the lead. William has his ninth goal of the season. Three of those have come in this season's FA Cup. Just noticed as he shaped a strike, you said, Clive, about being unsighted behind the wall. Crouching down too. I know he's got to get the spring, but it kind of made the sight of it any easier. Yeah, he doesn't see that ball too late. It comes round over the shoulder of Deli Alley, and all of a sudden, as soon as he's in sight, he's trying to take off. The pace of the free kick has beaten him before he can get anywhere near it. David Luis away from Christian Eriksen. Son. Deli Alley. Lift it through to Kay. So a rather casual clearance from David Luiz. Kane climbs above it, and Aspilicueta has to put it behind for a corner. Penny for Toby Alderweireld's thoughts at this time. Well, I've got to say that the, the whole initial move was started with a wonderful challenge from Ake at the other end. Then Chelsea swept up field, but Swise touch, Pedro's run. Oldervero had to make the challenge, he got the timing wrong, it's been costly. William brilliant on three kicks, Eriksen usually good on corners. That one's headed away by Ake, who's already proved his worth in the Chelsea side. Well, I think he's been selected for his, his athleticism. Certainly, he's the one who can cover situations very, very quickly. He's had a really positive start to this game. Playing is a Chelsea charter. Antonio Antonio reads the banner. And that's what the Chelsea fans are singing now in praise of their Italian manager, who could well end up as a double winner in his first season at the bridge. They're on course, all right. Kante. 
Dante to Batshuayi. William a little too close to Angola Kante, but he keeps battling. Tottenham a little bit fortunate because it really was a sloppy pass square that Kante intercepted and just couldn't feed Batshuayi quick enough for him to get a shot away. Shows that Tottenham are so far having a bad day when you see the Tottenham and Alderweire are making mistakes because normally they have seemingly a telepathic understanding. Yeah, for me, the two best centre-halves in the country. I know Chelsea supporters would feel that Louise and Aspilicueta for most of the season we've carried over a long time. But, no, they've started sloppily. And the result of that, Alderweire on free-kick has ended up with William thumping the free-kick past Hugo Lloris. Diego Costa has put behind him, along with John Terry behind him, the disappointment of being left out of the starting line in cheering that William strike. It's team spirit. It's getting trippy. Ricky up against Ake. Ten out of ten for Ake so far. who seems to get nine and a half, if not ten out of ten every game he plays. Yeah, he's the consistent, and that's what he does so well. Just breaking up play, getting those toe uh, interceptions time and time again. Yeah. Ballet to Victor Wanyuan. Talked about that Spurs selection with Son on the left side of a 3-4-3. Three, three. He's not been able to get involved in the game at all yet. Frozen out on the left-hand touchline. Might come his way now via Vertonghen. The player in the form that he's been in, down the middle, scoring goals. It's a, an isolated figure at the moment. That's easy for Thibaut Courtois. And the question would always be, why change that? Because he has been in scintillating goal-scoring form, joining Harry Kane when he came back into the side. And Consistently getting into goal scoring positions. That's why here's Kante. Son got across it. Up to Moses. Goal scorer William. And Marcos Alonso. Pedro trying to leave Dyer behind. I certainly no hangover from that Manchester United result or performance for this Chelsea side the way they've started this semi-final. Well, I was at Old Trafford last Sunday and it was clear from the start that Chelsea just weren't right collectively, but they're absolutely right, Clive. They have found their game again today. Flag up against Mickey Batshuayi. Be a Spurs free kick. Hard. Doesn't look too frustrated. Nathan Eke will have been since returning to Chelsea from Bournemouth, where he was getting regular game time and impressing. You can see why Chelsea wanted him back when needed, ready to perform. Well, to this point, he stepped up to the plate, he's been perfect so far. Been strong, physical with Harry Kane, and as I say, made a wonderful. Wonderful challenge, beginning of the move for the goal. Chelsea flying high. Moses. There's a touch that saw the ball get away from him. Martin Atkinson didn't particularly help Tottenham there. Moses got lucky. Challenged by Wanyama, Chelsea's throw. Track Moses right to the far side, and in the end, a well timed tackle towing the ball out for a throw. Son finds Kane. And Yama uses his body to hold off William. Luis is looking for Kane to win this. It's David Luis, who was better in that aerial duel. Deli Alley now trying to curl one forward for Ericsson. It was always going to run away. Moses. Goes 
Dembele. Belle. His arms are steered safely back to Courtois. Eric Dyer. Tottenham into the feet of Deli Alley, who was challenged by Aspilicueta. No free kick. We often see them given when the player comes in right through the opponent like that. Oh, the close attentions of Aspilicueta. I thought that Deli Alli had taken control of the ball and then almost just jumps expecting the challenge. Martin Atkinson just waved it away. That's a good challenge by Wanyama. Deli Alli tries to drift away from the Chelsea tackles. Can't quite get there to keep it in, though. Cheekily trying to carry on. I think he knew. Gulf of water for the Spurs head coach. Both were vying with one another to be the underdog, it seemed, yesterday. Let's see Pochettino saying, if there is one favourite, it is more Chelsea. Antonio Conte countered with, there's a moment you have to finish considering yourself an underdog. He's aimed directly at Spurs. Here's Pedro running directly at Spurs. Blocked by Dyer. William Dante, really good cross offside. Wouldn't have counted from Batshuayi. He didn't get the power to beat Larice anyway. He's actually got it away, perhaps too hurriedly. I keep wanting to say Vaughan whenever the ball's down that end. I've got so used to seeing him in goal for Spurs in cup ties. Hugo Lloris, might be busy again here, Dyer caused all sorts of problems by the pacey Pedro. The energy in that Chelsea front line, I think we maybe have to see the reason why Diego Costa's been left out so far today. Yeah, definitely pace and, and uh, spring in their step for the Chelsea front line, which is just unsettled what normally is a very solid, rock-solid Spurs defence. Cup winner in both of the last two seasons with Paris Saint Germain. Final Trippier. Ball into Kane. Trying to turn and find Deli Alley. Chelsea have made that look as though it was meant all along. I don't think it was. Well, it was a nice one too with Courtois, but it wasn't what was meant. Deli Alley. Kane was caught there, and it will be a free kick for Spurs. Kante the offender. Yeah, I think that the referee was looking at the challenge on Harry Kane as well. Just as he flicks this ball round the corner, and Kane catching him. Try to play advantage. Looks to lift one up towards the edge of that Chelsea box. Ooh, something different. Short shot to Kane. The effort was deflected, and Chelsea had just switched off for a second there, and Spurs very nearly took advantage. Yeah, it was clever, but Kante stayed alive, and in the end, as Kane takes the touch and is trying to work the shooting angle, it's that man Kante again there, making an all-important block. It's such invaluable work that he, he puts in time and time again. He was there already. They'll all have to be set for this. Eriksson in. Song. Trippier could deliver a mean cross if used. It is Ericsson. It's helped goalwards and it's in. What a brilliant flick from Harry Kane. That is predatory finishing from a striker who is rapidly becoming one of Europe's best. Spurs level. Class Kane. Well, that's a wonderful finish from Harry Kane. Chelsea just don't get out quick enough to stop the cross coming in. And when it comes in, Harry Kane improvises, he stoops, you can see there's an opportunity to clear the corner, they work the ball from the right-hand side, 
and essentially Kante who doesn't get close enough allows Ericsson to deliver and Kane stooping way in advance of that near post it really is the subtlest of headers but it's a brilliant one he just helps it on into the far corner what a response from Spurs that man Harry Kane again it's the only possible way he could have scored from there it's actually not the sort of goal you associate Harry Kane with but he's getting better all the time scoring all manner of goals and that's made it Chelsea 1 Tottenham Hotspur 1 we could be in five for one of the classic FA Cup semi-finals here yeah I think when we're talking about who was favourites for me there were no favourites it's such a difficult game to call Chelsea without doubt started the better but what a response from Spurs and when you need a goal and you've got a man like Harry Kane you've always got a chance and they're back level 26 goals this season Cut the other three all came in one game and Fulham in round five. That was something special, that really was. The guy knew exactly what he was doing, he just had to make a little touch to the ball, he couldn't direct it, he's just helping it back into that far corner area. He had to stoop, it was great improvisation, it's a brilliant finish. towards Kane again, couldn't stoop that time, that's Pellicueta half cleared. Marcus Alonso has mistimed that challenge, free kick for Tottenham Hotspur. That's a good spell for Spurs. All of a sudden Chelsea finding it difficult to clear their lines, get the ball out of their final third. And this is a late challenge from Alonso, low pulls out, his momentum carries him into Ericsson. Good position now to be delivered from. Christian Eriksen. Well, I was on that man. Manu Matic who's trying to stop him from scoring again. Chris Bott from Eriksen. That's why. influence on the game now. Deli Alli not a massive one yet. Draws Ake in. Ball is poked out by a Chelsea touch. And back into a play. Antonio Conte directing traffic on the touchline, joined at the edge of the technical area by Maurizio Pochettino. It's got complete contrast, isn't it? Conte is really exuberant. Gino just standing there, reasonably calm, but just orchestrating his group. I was just going to say, Clark, it's good to see Antonio Conte back like that, because he barely moved a muscle at Old Trafford last weekend. Yeah, that was very uncharacteristic of him, and he certainly plays, and plays every ball for his team when he's involved in that technical area. Someone has overcooked that. Put his hand up to apologise to one of his Tottenham teammates. Let's have another look at the moment when Harry Kane levelled it up. You can see he's just a yard in front of Ake, but the way he stoops, he knows he's got to make some sort of contact on the cross to get it on target. That really is the subtlest of touches, but brilliantly taken by Harry Kane. As a former master poacher yourself, Clive, which did you prefer, the thumpers or the little dicks like that? As long as it went across the line in the back of the net, guy, it didn't matter if you scored from 35 yards, a spectacular one. You just felt the same if you were tapping it in from two inches. Well, what did you score from 35 yards? Once or twice, maybe. There's some hope here. Progress is held up by Victor Moses. Moses has barely had the chance to cross halfway. Spurs got level, they have been the team in the ascendancy. It's just taken the wind out of Chelsea sails, and they were really playing well at the beginning of this game, starting to Brighton. And Son, that was a good ball, it teased Deli Alley. it was cleared by David Luiz, who is then caught, and he's hurt. He's hurt and he's not got up, he's not moved, he's motionless in that penalty area. We've got an attempt fake for the Brazilian, but John Terry might get his chance yet. 
Christian Eriksen. David Luiz very, very carefully back to his feet. He wants the ball put out. Spurs aren't obliging. Jan Vertonghen now defenders union. He does. I think Martin Atkinson basically gave him the instruction to do that. Yeah, Luiz is signalling for that ball to be played out. And Jan Vertonghen. I think he actually kicks. Oh, it's. Uh, Deli Ali it just stands on his right ankle. If we see it here, he's stretching for the ball. And as he comes down, he's looking away. I'm not so sure that that's intentional from Deli Ali, but it certainly has caught David Luiz on that right ankle. Yeah, full weight. A really painful one for the Chelsea centre back. If it proves to be the end of him today, we might see Chelsea's most famous centre-back take the field for one of his final appearances. Many thought that John Terry would have started with Gary Cahill being out. Nathan Ake has come in instead. This is it As you see, it's the right boot of Deli Alli. He certainly doesn't know where Luiz's leg is, but he, he comes down on that right ankle. Just here, you'll see it. the contact is there on Luiz's right ankle. David Luiz has been described by his manager this season as a warrior. He's going to have to show that now. It looks as though he's going to be OK to continue. Most of his injury problems this season have been higher up with his knees. He's having a look around to see who the perpetrator was. This is, guy, this is the FA Cup semi-final. Not so sure that he would go off. He's walking, he's fine. He's now asking a question, maybe of the referee, Deli Ali. David Luiz is not going to leave this game for that. He turned 30 yesterday, David Luiz, and uh, how he's matured, really, ever since that humiliation that he suffered with Brazil at the last World Cup. He's just got better and better since then. Running at full speed now, getting across to Kane. Yeah, he's OK. I've got to say, I'm not surprised. Just had a little word with Deli Ali there, the two are close. The two have just done a total brief handshake. And she tries to wander through, as Pilicueta gets it away. I'm actually surprised that he's captain for the day and not David Lewis in this Chelsea line. Yeah, some surprise, but Aspen of Quetta has been a, a model of consistency this season. Victor Moses is going to get to that. Son can't stop the cross. The Tom does. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with David Luiz, the way that he sprayed that pass some 60 yards into the path of Victor Moses. Still painful for the Brazilian defender. Moses remembers his old days as an out and out winger with that move. William is held off it. He's still looking at the referee, wondering why there wasn't a free kick for him. That's Piliqueta, there's Dali Ali looking for Ericsson, but that's nowhere near. Well, the Chelsea players are remonstrating with uh, referee Martin Atkinson for one or two of the challenges, one from Dembele. Certainly got hold of William there, he sort of manhandles him. Referee wasn't having any of it, and it was in it was Spurs' penalty box. Just wonder, had it been outside the box, whether it might have been a free kick. The Spurs counter will have been that they thought there was obstruction the other way. There's Harry Kane holding off Kante, he nearly got through, he tumbled. All of that noise has come from Spurs supporters, there's no chance of a penalty for that. Yeah, no, Aspel of Quetta stands his ground and it comes off him as Kane tries to drag it past him, no penalty. Marcus Alonso. Alda Varelli nearly turned that straight to William. There's no mistaking this as an FA Cup semi-final, is there? This is end-to-end, -end. this is all-out, two teams desperate to win. This is a fantastic game and it's unfolding, it's still one apiece. Anything could happen, Guy. Really fantastic first half an hour. Yama. Son. It's the most amount of space that he's had when he's been.
been able to receive the ball. Got away from Moses to find Dele Alli. Kante is surprisingly the man who makes it from him. And the Barrett. Against his fellow Belgian, Mickey Batshuayi. Interesting confrontation. So we know everything there is to know about Batshuayi from the international group. Down the line to Marcus Alonso. Micro management. Belgium's boss is here today, Roberto Martinez. You would have been expecting to watch Aiden Hazard for 90 minutes, I'm sure, but he's still got Tom Batshuayi, Courtois, and Alderweireld to see. Still getting used to Roberto Martinez as an international boss. We're so used to seeing him over the years on the touchline for Wigan, Swansea, and then later yeah. Everton. Great for him to see those international players that are under his control now in such a big, important game and the way that they handle this sort of situation. That's one of his men. Jan Vertong. Threading it through for Son. First time from Son. Pilaqueta there to stop the cross, but there'll be another one coming from Christian Eriksen now. Well, that's great work from Espilaqueta because the way, uh, the way to the pass from Vertonghen into the path of Song invites him to cross it first time. Thumbs up to the centre half. Good defending from Espilaqueta to cut out that cross. Jackson draws breath and then delivers. Eriksson trying to make the angle. Dante's block. Eriksson again. David Luiz was leaving it for Ake, and I don't think he was totally sure that nobody in white was lurking behind him. So a bit of a chance there, it was only that Ake was uh, just tracking back into the penalty box and he picked it up. It was a sloppy clearance from Batsway that kept the pressure on that Chelsea rear guard. Gone already. Where did all that go? Terrific kick time. Ten by Trippier. Much to Conte's disgust as on that touchline. William. And they got to it. Going away to Trippier. Ali Ali finds Eriksson. And fatters his chances. Good work from Matty, she just went in behind Ake just to protect him and intercepts Ali as he looks as if he's getting goal side of that left side of the Chelsea defence. Dele Ali down. Chelsea fans are booing that. I didn't think there was any reason for it. He's back to his feet now. Interesting that the Spurs have looked better going forward since they just Switch things around with Ericsson going into the middle and Dele Alli onto the right. Yeah, Christian Eriksson getting more involved in that central position. Henry Kane coming in front of the pair of them. Here's Vertonghen. It's on. To Wanyama. Trippier. Bell. Song versus Moses. No way through. And Bell. Belgium equation, of course. Plenty of red devils on the field. Tempo's definitely decreased in terms of the way that they've closed down 
since that Spurs goal. They've dropped away a little bit, allowed Spurs to dictate the tempo of the game with their possession. Tom. Lead to Kane. David Luiz was pulling and then pushing. Free kick. He just strikes for the ball and, and uh, Harry Kane takes the touch and moves it away. As he's telling Luiz there, you watch, he takes the touch, moves it away just there before Luiz strikes to make the interception. Drew the foul, good play from Kane holding the ball up. Bella turns away from Matic but running to Kante. Ericsson. Trippier. Quite as dynamic down the right as Carl Walker, but he can deliver a very good cross when he gets the chance. Free kick Spurs. Yeah, he's caught there, Trippier, as he, as he clips that ball inside. There's a late challenge on him. The assistant is, is literally a yard away from it. It's Alonso again. See here, he just strikes on his right ankle as he turns that ball round the corner. Pull up Marcus Alonso has not quite got right. But could have been better positioned to wave his flag. Looks to put it in. The alley's got right away to the back of the box. But he's going to have to travel an awfully long way to reach him. Something Spurs have worked on, obviously. I'm surprised to see him figure at some point in this set play. Over from Ericsson, it won't reach Deli Alley. But Ericsson can put another one in now from the corner. That's a good delivery, and Kante going back towards his own goal. In the end, makes a really important interception. So I think it's going to be Son, who is on side, who is just about to sweep the ball in from Ericsson's cross. Good interception from Kante. And it goes by Alderweireld. It was Victor Wanyama popping up. Came at him quickly. Vertonghen. It's a cracking cross, and it's only just wide. Eric Dyer got to the front of the queue. Well, that's the type of cross it's almost impossible to deal with when it comes in at that pace. And Dyer makes a really good run across the front of defenders. He times it well, it's just the direction. Unlike Harry Kane, he can't quite get it just inside that far post. Spurs throw. Spurs on top at the moment. And on the score. And Yama. Since Spurs drew level, Chelsea have barely crossed the halfway line. Uh, they've dropped away, they've not pressed in the same manner that they did from the beginning of the game. And Spurs have gone from strength to strength. And they can let that one roll, and everybody in the stadium can just take a breath because the pace in this game has been so intense from naught minutes to 36. A long way to continue by. They've seen some football. Chelsea tension was in attendance at Wembley. Italia wants as a player, 1995, never won it in his time in charge of Juventus, lost one final. Towards Kane, and Kane tries to control, it was a, an awkward one to properly deal with, just allowed Nathan Ake a cent. See what was a fantastic ball, it was a difficult one for Kane to bring down. He did get in behind Ake. Okay, on the ball now. It's a nice knockdown for Pedro. He's asked a little too much of William. Okay. David Luiz had to beat Deli Alli to that. Well, he had to strain every sinew there, David Luiz, because he has to get something on that good interception. It's Deli Alli's 
looking to get on to the flicked header from Harry Kane. Like the top. Interceptions at times. No problem with that left ankle now. His mood has certainly improved markedly in the first quarter of an hour of the game. Touches and moving the ball forward. That's given away to Ericsson. Too straight. Straight at Courtois. And that errant square pass from Chelsea. This time from Espelacueta. Straight to Christian Ericsson. Christian Ericsson was a scorer when these sides met for the first time this season in November. The goal struck from a very similar position. Chelsea 2, Spurs 1 at Stamford Bridge. Now David Luiz is down again, this time holding his head. Taking all the blows, Chelsea number 30. The back of Christian Eriksen's head is sort of headed the back of his head after Eriksen just touches the ball. We know they're the top two in the Premier League fight, but when you think about the redevelopment of White Hart Lane, it seemed to happen at Stamford Bridge. Arguably the two clubs prime for the most exciting time for the next decade or so. Oh, absolutely, I think uh, the investments that both clubs are making in the new stadium, the quality of their squads that they're um, amassing, yeah, two of the top teams for a, a number of years to come, I'm sure. And we'll be seeing them here a lot at Wembley. Spurs expected to be here next season and maybe Chelsea to follow them as tenants when work begins at Stamford Bridge. I don't think the fans take too kindly on both sides to all the seats being read. Left it up towards Ericsson. There's Kante. Through to Batshuayi. Kante has an option in Moses' right. There is Victor Moses, and Son didn't quite get that right. Was that in or out? It was in! It's a Chelsea penalty! Ian Hussin, the assistant, was the man who waved his flag. Son is finding the defensive side of that left-hand side roll in a 3-4-3 difficult. Well, Guy, he goes to, early, he goes to ground too early. Victor Moses... He just slides the ball past him with his first touch, and then you can see he rides the challenge. It's the assistant that makes up Martin Atkinson's mind. He comes across, he just goes underneath Victor Moses. It's a silly challenge from Song, and then eventually Martin Atkinson, certainly working with his assistant, has given the penalty kick. Looking at the replay, I don't think there's an argument. Clever from Moses. Very naive from Son Hung Min. He's a forward, and it looked that way with that tackle. Yeah, he laid down to make the challenge too early, and Moses was clever. He knocked the ball past him, drew the challenge. William has already scored one. William has scored two. Chelsea have the lead again at Wembley.
Chelsea 2, Tottenham 1. And there'll be a relief, Chelsea, because it's come off the back of Spurs' best spell of the game. From the equaliser, the game's been... The majority of the play's been for Spurs. They counter, get into Spurs' penalty box, win a penalty, and William dispatches it perfectly as Lloris goes away to his left-hand side. Very coolly taken. What a reprieve that is for Chelsea. They've been on the back foot ever since Spurs drew themselves level. And Son Hung-min was drawn into a tackle that he didn't really have to make. And it's Antonio Conte's team that has the upper hand with half-time looming. William in the last few weeks has been linked with a move away. Manchester United one name mentioned and maybe a chance to be reunited with Jose Mourinho. But what a valuable player he is. That's ten goals this season. And he's been a substitute more than he started. And you've got to say, Conte's decision to play him today. Song's gone down too early, so now he can't control what's going to happen. And soon as Victor Moses just side foots that past him, you can see he's already going, but there's going to be contact because of the momentum. And, and Song is completely out of control of the challenge. Kante, and here's Moses. Trippier, caught Bashuai, he was going to get onto that for a second. Oh, Lloris very nearly took it out of his area. I don't think he quite crossed the line. I think Hugo Lloris does ever so well because it looks like he's sliding out. He almost juggles the ball to keep it in the 18-yard box. It's like a cricketer on the boundary. Letting go before he made contact with the boundary rope. And that's a foul. That will be a free kick for Chelsea, and Moussa Dembele's angry reaction will earn him a talking to at the very least. Let's have another look at this from Hugo Lloris. Does he let go in time? Oh, he does handle outside the area, you know. He did get a hold. He did. I thought he left the ball alone there after that touch, but he clearly just pushes the ball back in over the line he's got away with one now very difficult for the assistant referee who was right in line to see that he was looking through a crowd of players here in Trippier we are into the first of two minutes added on to the end of a breathless first half at Wembley what a shame there's only two minutes left of his first half well, I don't know about that I need a break could do with one too. Someone bringing Victor Moses, the two men at the centre of the last goal, the penalty dispatched by William. Henry Kane has levelled it up for Spurs once. He's looking across the Son here. Son against Moses at the other end. Dembele had to turn back, turn back into Pedro. And a free kick for Chelsea for Dembele's over-eager attempts to retrieve. Yep, and they're in no rush now because they'll be more than happy, I feel, to go in with his 2-1 lead at half-time. Marcus Alonso. Batshuayi, turned past out the Verald, Trippier was there to stop any further progress. Trippier's looking for Kane, didn't get anything on it. David Luiz, wanting to find Batshuayi. The Verald dropped back. Oh, that looked like a foul, it is. a clever pass from uh, Luiz and Batshuayi just wasn't on the same wavelength. Marcus Alonso is getting involved here and getting involved once too often. He has committed a couple of fouls. There was another one there and then he delayed Spurs taking the free kick. Yeah, that was a combination of his uh, offences. Totting up and then referee Martin Atkinson was having no more of it. Three years ago he was on the wrong end of a Wembley result in the Sunderland side beaten by Manchester City in the League Cup final. 
for his Chelsea team today so far. Spurs have a free kick now, we're just about time to take it before we hear the half-time whistle. Chelsea just killing it, that's why William just standing over the ball, not allowing Spurs to take it quickly. And that will do it for the first half of this season's first Emirates FA Cup semi-finals. What a half it's been. William with a superb free kick, Harry Kane with a very clever header to equalise. And then with half-time looming, Son Heung-min went to ground and paid the price. Moses went over his legs and William scored his second goal of the afternoon. Let's hope the second half continues in this fashion. It's been brilliant. It is Chelsea 2, Tottenham Hotspur 1. Welcome back to Wembley, which looks a picture and has been the stage for a scintillating FA Cup semi-final so far between Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur. Vizio Pochettino unhappy at being behind at the break and engaged in conversation with fourth official Neil Swarbrick, presumably about the award of a penalty, which made it 2-1 to Chelsea. Well, he's probably saying that there was no contact from Son's challenge, but for me, Certainly, he's out of control of that challenge as soon as he lays down. No arguments that that was a correct decision from the referee Martin Edwards. No changes made by either head coach for the beginning of the second half. It's Chelsea who get things going again. David Luiz who looks for Victor Moses. Watch for his duel with Son Hong Min. That was the big talking point. Half time. The guy you don't want Son Hoomin back in that position. You want him higher up the field, certainly coming from a higher position on the left infield to join Harry Kane. Defending back there as a left wing back, not for Son Hoomin. The line to suppose the problem that Spurs have had ever since the injury to Danny Rose. Sustained a problem with his knee at Sunderland at the end of January. Problem for Harry Kane there. He was fouled. Spurs have a free kick. Yeah, as, as for the pressure catching Kane as he just swivels on the pass and knocks it past the Chelsea defender. He's not going to let him progress from there. Clearly catches his ankle. Toby Aldebar out. Looking for the run of Son. Moves his head around. He's pulling quite a further away from Kane. Reminder on the bottom of your picture of the teams out on the Wembley field. Chelsea making five changes. 
changes from last weekend at Manchester United. Spurs just a couple from their second 4 0 win in a row. They put four past Bournemouth last Saturday. Up for the week before that. They found at least one more goal today. There's Dembele holding off Kante. Deli Ali bumped off it by David Luiz. David Luiz unhappy with the way Deli Ali went down. Spurs fans unhappy with his reaction. Yeah, Maurizio Pochettino not happy as well, and it's, they feel it's obstruction because you can see Luiz clearly not playing the ball. The ball's advanced. He stops Deli Ali making progress. Spurs throw. Trippier will take it. Session still going on involving David Luiz. He's an engaging character for teammates and opponents alike. He reminds having a chat. Poor player, is that by Luiz? Sons helped him out. Dembele. Down goes Deli Alley, doesn't get anything again. Chelsea have the ball. Dyer just stepped in front of Pedro, that'll be a free kick. And that's Kante on Wanyama. It's all very tetchy at the beginning of this second half. There's always been a bit of that when these sides have met over the years. Not only in your playing days, in your dad's before then. Yeah, absolutely right. The Allen line is strong in both these clubs. Father and myself play for both clubs. My father joining Spurs from Chelsea. And he died. Finds Victor Wanyama. Now Eriks. It's a good challenge from Ake. He's had a good game. Michael Keir, of course. He doesn't quite have the room for that manoeuvre to work on the touchline. And now Kane has given Matic the slip. Across comes David Luiz to stop the cross. Spurs corner coming. Clever play from Kane, just holding Matic off as the ball's thrown down the line. But Luis was very alert to deny Kane the chance to fire that ball across the six-yard box. Spurs goal from an Eriksen cross. Spurs two goals against Chelsea in January from Eriksen crosses, both headed in by Deli Alley. Something different this time. Song. Didn't work. Eriksen not tuned into that. Kante kept it in. Just. Gary Trippier. Not quite as flowing and exciting in the early minutes of the second half. It's a little bit more cagey now. It is, yeah. Chelsea have dropped away whereas they started the game. I thought with real intensity in the way that they closed down, just seemed to have dropped away. They were allowed Spurs possession in their own half, trying to keep their shape defensively. Orchestrating every single player, telling them where to run, where to close. A bit more 
relaxed approach, as is always the way from Mauricio Pochettino. In this flair-minded Argentinian way, get the better of Conte's defence, oh, it has! What a ball, what a goal! Dele Alli is in to equalise! Guy, it's the same combination that came up trumps in the Premier League game. Ericsson clipping that ball in between the centre-halves and Ali making that run. In the Premier League game, it was two-headed finishes. This is an unbelievable pass from Ericsson and a brilliant finish from Deli Ali. Left-footed, half volley. As soon as he turns, he looks for the run. Ali's signalling where he wants it delivered. He puts it on a spot. Left foot, that's such a difficult finish on the half volley. But he thunders it into the corner of the net. Chelsea 2, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Deli Alley nets against Chelsea again. He's hardly had the opportunity to put any influence on the game, but goodness me, he's done that now. I don't know which was better than cross or the finish. Deli Alley again, challenged successfully by Ake. No penalty, despite the Spurs screams. None from the players. No good time tackle from Ake. Should we be surprised? This game has come to life once again. And he dumped to the turf once again. And there's the Tongan. The Tongan caught by William. Spurs on the front foot. Spurs get a free kick. Kane went down on the edge of the area. That's well, across the stepping across Kane as he toes the ball by him. Martin Atkinson has got to keep his focus very sharp because there's so much happening and it's nearly all happening around that Chelsea penalty area now. Although, oh, it's a free kick. Thought at the moment that when Yama had lost possession in a very costly place. I think that's why he's a little bit unlucky here. This is the challenge from Mackay on Deli Alli. As you can see, clearly a really well-timed sliding tackle. Plays the ball away, Ali then tumbling to ground, no penalty. It's the Deli Alli song that is being sung by the Spurs fans now. Chelsea fans' arms folded. They've seen their side lose the lead for the second time in the game. Twenty goals this season for Deli Alli. Double his tally in his first Spurs season. Well, the hallmark of a, a good striker and goal scorer is that you can keep going and wait for that one chance. And he's had a frustrating time so far this evening. But when that ball's delivered by Ericsson, and it was a magnificent ball, he still has a lot to do to finish it. It's a fantastic left foot, half, half volley. We talk about assists and you look at the stats and some players make more goals than others but that almost deserves an assist with a gold star by it, that ball from Ericsson. That was just measured to perfection. Yeah, Deli Alli just pointed in the direction where he wanted it delivered and it was on a sixpence. Beautiful ball from Ericsson. There's Dembele. Deli Alli met by David Luiz. Pedro. Wanyama, William, he got a foot to it, throws his head to it. This is an FA Cup tie. It isn't half. Another superb Wembley occasion. London being lit up for it, from it, as the, uh, the April evening shadows lengthen in the capital. Free kick Spurs in a very scrappy couple of minutes. He has his lots of challenges going in. William just following through there on Wanyama. That was wild, and credit to Wanyama for not making a great deal of it. Chelsea a little bit rattled and flustered. That's why he's going to get a yellow card if he's not careful. He's standing too close. The referee's asking to retreat. He hasn't moved. 
it's not going anywhere. Eric Dyer. towards the hour mark who's going to be the first of the coaches to make a change could it be a positive change or could it go against their side what a tackle that is by Kante and now Pedro couldn't take it in his stride to use his pace how about his skill it's good now he brings in William Batshuayi well positioned that's a superb block classic defending from Jan Baton Ericsson has now managed to get the ball up towards Dembele. Son was off balance and was forced further that way by Aspilicueta. Spurs are doing everything in a hurry. Deli Ali keeps on going, runs into David Luiz, but he's won that corner all by himself. But really positive from Deli Ali, the way that he tries beyond Aspilicueta and then draws David Luiz out. Spurs attacking their fans' end in this second half, and it's non-stop attacking. And it comes. And for once, Christian Eriksen doesn't get it right. Then Bernard. Time for Hazard, I feel, guy. Pull back to Dembele, it's a huge deflection. It's a block, it's a corner, again. Yeah, Chelsea need to keep the ball, they need to retain possession of the ball. It's all Spurs at the moment. It's going to be a double Chelsea change in a moment, and it is those two. Out comes Courtois, he didn't get much on it, just enough. Swung in by Trippier. Kante away. Deli Alley brilliantly done. That wasn't though. No, that's unlike Deli Alley because he scored a goal similarly in the last couple of Premier League games from that sort of position. It was a bold choice by Conte to leave them on the bench. Is he going to get the response from the players introducing him into the game on the hour? And if you're going to put two players on into an occasion like this, what a two to have in reserve. A master goal scorer. And one of the best goal makers who weighs in with a few himself, of course, Aidan Hazard. Christian Eriksen on the field, Aidan Hazard about to come onto the field. Tomorrow we get to see the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Mesut Ozil. Have there ever been better goal creators two days running at Wembley? No, four great teams in the semi-finals. And if this is the start of it, guy, we must expect great things again tomorrow as well. Pachuay is going off, selected ahead of Diego Costa, but makes way for him now. And William too, selected ahead of Aidan Hazard, and he's proved his worth with a free kick and a penalty put into the Tottenham net. Looks really disappointed to be coming off, with Aidan Hazard finally getting a run to great Chelsea cheers. I suppose, though, Clive, every player should look disappointed to be coming off, especially from a game like this. Yep, you don't want to leave a game like this, certainly if uh, you've had a contribution in the way that uh, William has. Will Maurizio Pochettino react now after that double substitution? Stego Costa and Musa Dembele, of course, too. Remember last May, the end of the season, the Battle of Stamford Bridge, it all got a little out of hand between these two. There's a free kick, Pedro was just too sharp. Got in front of one, Yama, cleverly. Manu Matic. He's barely had a chance to spend any time on the ball. 
David Luiz. Matic. Brings in Diego Costa for the first time. Back to Alonso. Cross is blocked by Kieran Trippier. And the bounce out. I think for a throw in, not a corner. It is amazing how players have an influence and immediately they're trying to play balls into the feet of Hazard, playing in and off of Hazard, um, Costa, sorry. A sign of how the game has gone, but in terms of changes, Antonio Conte has bricked first. Alonso in, Costa, and a touch, and it's cleared by Son. Kane, nicely down to Deli Ali, chased by Aspilicueta. Can he find Eriksson? Oh, Christian Eriksson caught it two minds, it was a difficult one for him. Yeah, difficult ball to bring down, he throws himself at it but can't get any purchase in the header. Good break from Spurs, Kane linking up Valley again. Eriksson trying to join on the far side. Inside Marcus Alonso. Spurs for a kick. Expansive ball all the way from one side to the other. Another viral. Spurs fans have generally been slightly the louder throughout the course of the afternoon, but it's Chelsea making the noise now. And with good reason as Kante takes up possession. Can he find a way through to Hazard? It's Alderweireld who stopped him from reaching Costa in the first place. Trippier finds Eriksen. Into the feet of Deli Alley. So trying to get onto the alley lift. Ericsson. It's Kane Trippier who will try and attack that. It's Marcus Alonso with him. Here's Wanyama urged to shoot by the Spurs fans. So that's what he did unsuccessfully. Yeah, not one of his strongest points, Wanyama. though Spurs are going to revert to something more like the team we're used to seeing. Kyle Walker is going to come on. Kyle Walker who hasn't played any part in this season's FA Cup run. He's of course an automatic choice in the Premier League. Might well be Son who goes off and possibly a change to the left for Kieran Trippier. Walker, presumably, Clive will operate down the right. Yeah, and I think that's a, a pointer towards Hazard coming on and Walker trying to pick him up and certainly deal with him. An easy run from Ericsson, and then finds Kane who slipped and spoiled the quality of his cross. Hazard. Diego Costa. Flag up against Diego Costa. throughout the first half, understandably that pace has dropped, but it's, it's more a tactical battle now. You can see the minds at work on the yeah, touchline. No, no one wants to make a mistake now, Guy. It's on as even at the moment. No one wants to make a mistake that could be so costly. Rick Dyer. Troubled in the second half so far. 21 minutes of it have been played. Kane, Deli Alley. Kane has Eriksson in the centre. He's got Trippier arriving on the right. 
done well to keep it for as long as he has. Finally, it's won by Nathan Acker. That's a collector's item. Oh, a waste of a pass from Angolo Kante. Yeah, it's just an aimless, really uh, punch-up field because Chelsea are finding it difficult to keep possession. Any concerted spell of, uh, of uh, possession in this second half now. on Moussa Dembele. Watch that space. Song. Enthusiastic burst, perhaps mindful that he's the player who's about to be replaced. But again, it was a fantastic little toe from Pente. He's tracking him back. Trippier. Eriksson. Okay. Trippier. Curl it around, Marcus Alonso. And now Spurs will make the change. And Kyle Walker will get a Wembley run. Taking the place of Son Hockman. Seems a long time ago. The end of the first half when he slid in and immediately regretted it. Chelsea penalty as a result, dispatched by William. Walker on and immediately runs to the right, and Kieran Trippier will go to the left-hand side. Yep, with some information for Kieran Trippier, but I think Walker will be coming into that area to try and deal with Hazard. two years ago. There's one the other. Okay. David Luiz ignored the run of Kane, kept his eyes focused on the ball to head away. Then better. Walker. Presented that to Marcus Alonso. Guy has stood firm. Diego Costa's eyes lit up at that though, and Lloris had to be quick. Hacker, Matic. Alonso trying to find Asar. Walker. Kane okay. just tapped at by Ake. Just clips the back of Harry Kane's calf. He's not happy, is he? And you can understand why. And he has scored both Chelsea goals today. Just a little low, isn't there? Is it before the storm? There's a storm coming, all right. 2 2. 20 minutes of the 90 to go, we could be primed for an extra half hour. And who knows what lies beyond that? Could well be all the way to penalties. Spurs look the more likely at the moment to get the next goal, but that was the case when it was 1 1 2. Walker back to Dembele. Wanyama. Trippier. Wanyama thought better of the shot this time. Walker. Alonso did well enough, and Spurs have a corner, and with Christian Eriksen taking it, that usually spells danger. Yeah, Oliver held up, I'm sure Vertonghen will join him. He's coming late, Vertonghen. Eriksen swings it away from the goal, it was headed by Azpilicueta. In from Vertonghen, Wanyama across. No white shirt able to pick up the pieces. And that's a good ball from Pedro to try and get Hazard away. Well policed by Dembele. Richard Decay. Spurs corner. They are racking up.
recover from Ericsson. And Acosta who heads away. Ericsson trying to make the space for the cross. Dembele. Couldn't poke it through the cane, it was blocked by Costa. Dembele, it's an all-Belgian battle with Hazard. He just wanted it more than Hazard, that's twice he's dispossessed him in a matter of seconds. Trippier goes down the left, Wanyama doesn't take that route. It's Dyer. It was too strong for Ali and it was never going to reach Trippier. Moses. And Moses is tripped, that's a tactical foul conceded by Deli Ali. He's bought himself a booking there. He has, but it's a silly challenge. He's now on a knife edge, is Deli Ali. Certainly was enough players defensively. You can see Moses, the left boot clips his legs. Always that about him, always has that about him. Here's the third and final Chelsea change, so with 17 minutes to go and then maybe another half an hour. That said, if it does go to another half an hour, they could use another substitute. That'll do it for the rest of the 90 anyway. Cesc Fabregas on for Pedro. And as a former Arsenal player and now a Chelsea player, he gets the reception he's always going to get from Tottenham. A warm welcome. FA Cup winner with Arsenal in 2005. As a teenager. I think it's an interesting change, is it, that Conte wants this done in 90 minutes. He's not looking at that extra time and the need for maybe a substitution if it goes that far. He's only got defenders left to throw on, all his attacking options used. And it is Chelsea attacking now. This is as close as they've been to the Spurs goal all half. It's a corner for Conte's Blues. Here it comes, David Luiz tried to get there. Here's Aiden Hazard! He found a way through! It's the Blues who strike the next blow! An absolute sucker punch for Spurs. One Chelsea attack, one goal. Chelsea three, Spurs two. Guys, their first strike on target in this second half. And when the corner's headed out, Ezen Hadars is standing on the edge of the box completely unmarked. And what does he do? Look, he's completely free there. It comes to him, he takes a touch, and then he drills it. He drills it perfectly back through the crowd. Hugo Lloris clearly unsighted. Doesn't see it, can't react, it's in the bottom corner. Chelsea lead again. When he was needed most, Chelsea's main man leaves the bench to give them control of the FA Cup semi-final once again. Chelsea have lost the lead twice. I wouldn't believe it would happen a third time. Free kick Spurs. They will throw everything at this now. Uh, we talked about who was going to make the first move. As regards the coaches, Conte's introduction of Costa and Hazard has come up trumps for him. Alexa can't shoot from here. line that's been drawn on the edge of the Chelsea penalty area. All the noise at Wembley is Chelsea noise. Eriksen's ball in, it took a Chelsea touch, it'll be another Spurs corner. Big touch from David Luiz. Important touch as that ball's delivered into the 18-yard box. Eriksen to take the corner. Head to it. Aaron Trippier, Kyle Walker, the Tongan, got the 
better than Marcus Alonso, only then to tamely give away possession. Walker. Trippier had no other option, it's back to Lloris. Sports fans stare into the sun and are staring at the seventh successive FA Cup semi-final defeat right now. Deli Alley. Kyle Walker. Alonso's toe poke takes it Deli Alley's way. Trippier. Dembele. Walker. Dyer. through to Thibaut Courtois. Spurs contemplating another substitution in a moment. Might be a bit of a surprise. George, Kevin and Kudu, who's had limited opportunities. Looks as though he's getting ready. It's the introduction of pace. That was obviously what Maurizio Pochettino thinks is going to make the difference. And here it comes. The French under-21 international winger is going to take the place of Victor Wanyama. So it is all about running at those Chelsea defenders. Pace, pace and more pace. Yeah, and putting another player higher up the field as well. Yama. Good for Ake. Oh, you have to say Conte got it right with his, with his substitutions. This is a certainly a throw at a dice as far as uh, Maurizio Pochettino is concerned. Andrew, you're putting those two on, you can't get it wrong, can you? The timing. Well, you never know how they're going to respond, having been left on the bench. Here is Aidan Azar, who stands to be the match winner. And he's been clipped there by Wanyama. Free kick, Chelsea, and here comes that Spurs change. Guy, that's clever play from Hazard. That's why he's been introduced, just to get on the ball, draw fouls, break play up. comes and Kudu for just his 15th Spurs appearance and 13 of those have been as a substitute signed from Marseille at the start of the season and you wear number 14 for Spurs you, you've got to be good following in the footsteps of the likes of Ginola, Poyet and Modric Chelsea's number 10 is pretty special Aidan Azar finds Cesc Fabregas back to Azar took it away from Costa it's Matic with the ball driver! Matic takes the net off! That is some strike from the Serbian to put Chelsea in control and have them heading back to Wembley for the FA Cup final. Well, there's disbelief on the Spurs fans' faces. That was a strike that was unstoppable. Hugo Lloris, no goalkeeper in the world would have saved that. He's rolling back invitingly for Matic to strike. He hits it with his favoured left foot. It's good interplay here from Fabregas and Hazard. And as he rolls it, it's inviting. Go on, hit it. Oh, that is magnificent. It's an unbelievable strike. Probably the match-winning strike in this FA Cup semi-final. That's a goal that Nemanja Matic would have dreamed of. He could not have hit that any more sweetly. Guy, you just do not stop that. Unreachable, unstoppable. Nemanja Matic has never scored a goal for Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. He's got one of the best they've ever scored at Wembley. Chelsea 4, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Spurs, Dembele unhappy with Fabregas. Kudu. Dyer. There's Eriksson. What have Spurs got left? Deli Alley with the turn, but doesn't benefit him or his side. 
Chelsea have dropped away. They've got a two-goal two lead to protect now. I wouldn't think Chelsea would be surrendering this. You would not expect in many, many years of watching football any Antonio Conte side to let this go. As a coach or as a player before that, he was solid. His team's generally solid. Thrown into Dembele. Eriksson. Dembele, ooh, he thrust his arm in there. And you can see just why Azpilicueta is angry. Just watch this, you go to Reese. Even if he springs to his left now, he's not getting anywhere near that guy. That is an absolutely sensational strike from Matic to win this FA Cup semi-final for Chelsea. Here we are getting towards the end of April. If you're going to score your first goal of the season, save it for something really, really special. Look at Kurt Zuma, look at John Terry. Faces of disbelief. Through to Assad, who's onside. He's beaten Lloris. Pulled back for Alonso. And Alderweireld made the stop. Guy, that's why he's been introduced. Hazard all of a sudden. Chelsea have come to life. He's been a big, big threat. Scoring the third, making the fourth. And all of a sudden, it looks like Chelsea are on their way to the final. Oh, nearly making number five. Victor Moses. Here's Fabregas. Moses just behind Diego Costa. Oh, you can see a lot of the life has been sucked out of Spurs now. They can't be composed for the rest of this. They've got to be held for leather. It's brilliantly executed by Moses. Alonso times it right to meet Walker. Hazard holds off Walker. What a player, what a professional. That's played through for Diego Costa. You were making the point, Clive. He could have been disappointed, he could have sulked a little, but when introduced at just the right time, he was ready to win the game. Well, good players answer their critics, don't they? And they also... If they have disappointment, they prove people wrong. And Hazard certainly come into this game and his contribution has been immense. The Spurs record in FA Cup semi-finals looks like it's continuing. This is their seventh time in the semis since their last cup win in 1991. And it looks like being Seven defeats in the service. They haven't won one of these games since against Arsenal 16 years ago. Gascoigne with two, or Gascoigne with one, and Lineker with two. Fabregas caught by Dembele there, and Dembele is getting a little bit naughty, as he did when these teams met in the Premier League at the end of last season. Yeah, he, uh, he left a little bit on Fabregas there. As he played the ball away, he used all his experience, guy, he knew what was coming. I think you can see by the facial expressions of Rizzo Botticino, he knows this game's done now. That's our expert supporter, I think knows it too. Fabregas, Diego Costa. That's how it's been for him in recent games, just a little off target. And Spurs are all over the place now, players being drawn out of position, little runs of Chelsea players are causing all sorts of problems. Completely disjointed. Costa with his first chance of the game heads wide. Kyle Walker. Eriksson. Another viral. Eric Dyer, 
Here's Nkudu. It's breezed past Victor Moses. And puts the brakes on at the right time. What a good run by Nkudu. Shame for him that it bounced back off him and it will be a Chelsea goal kick. Well, shows that explosive pace, but in the end, it's Moses who gets back to make the block. It ricochets out for a goal kick. Courtois in absolute no hurry whatsoever to get on with this game. David Luiz has been named as the man of the match this afternoon. Well, again, there's notes in the programme before saying you need to stay calm today. I think he's held his head. Certainly the changes defensively. Aki's come in alongside him. He's been a rock at the heart of that defence. Well, you think what a scare Chelsea had when he went down in pain. Trod on accidentally by Deli Alley early on in the contest. He would have been a massive miss. So there's the birthday boy from yesterday. He is going home with the spoils. And do we praise Antonio Conte to the heavens? For getting it right, for putting his two main men on at the right time and Fabregas to follow. He doesn't get a little bit of stick for not starting them, I suppose. He's got everything in mind, he's got Southampton on Tuesday to think about. Just look at the result, guys, semi-final of the FA Cup, 4-2. Hazard rolling it to Matic, that is a match-winning strike. Sensational semi-final goal. He almost looked as though he couldn't believe it himself. If you were going to look at these two lineups and say who's going to get the goal that will win the semi-final, well, he might have been choice 18 or 19. What a goal. Won by David Luiz. It will soon have been won by Chelsea. Plenty. On the Spurs side of things, are heading for home. This is no place to be to watch the other lot celebrate. In from Walker. Courtois, plenty on it. Kudu. Brixen jumped with Ake, and Courtois will very gratefully smother the ball. Guy, it's a magnificent stadium, but it is not a place to be if you're a loser, and especially in the semi-final of this magical competition. And the Varold diverts it to Walker. Ask the question what impact this is going to have on the Premier League with Spurs going to Crystal Palace on Wednesday in what is another London derby. They're coming thick and fast, they don't actually leave the capital again until going to Leicester on the 18th of May. Next for Spurs, it's Palace, Arsenal, West Ham in a row. Four points to make up on Chelsea, two goals to make up on them in four minutes of injury time today. It's very unlikely to happen. Marcus Alonso. Says Fabregas. Chelsea, if they could keep the ball for the whole of those four minutes, well, they would. Fabregas has. Semi-final in the Emirates FA Cup. That I was going to say that hasn't disappointed. That's not doing it justice. It has sparkled. Oh, it's been monumental. It's been a fantastic semi-final. That's Harry Kane. And Kyle Walker. Walker's clip in. David Luiz with another header out. Ericsson is going to have a shot. And Courtois knew that that was well, well wide of his goal. It's a very glum looking Maurizio Pochettino. He has to stay to the very end. And he will now try and get his team and his team, Daniel Levy up for the Premier League fight in the weeks to come. That's not all over yet. What a day for Chelsea. Reaffirming their status here today. 
as at the moment England's leading football club. Yep, the team to beat in the Premier League and now in the FA Cup final. Deli Alli gets through, is fouled, free kick Spurs. Two minutes of injury time played, the board said four, so at least two more to go. Harry Kane is not letting Christian Eriksen have a look in here, this will be his. Kante picks up a yellow card for the challenge, tackling from behind on Deli Alli. Impossible couldn't happen, could it? And one's not enough. If Kane does manage to beat Courtois here, we will see one minute of cavalry charge. It's a big if. There's the first part of the equation. Nobody else involved, this is all about Spurs' main man for goals. Here comes Kane. Oh, and it's not gone over the line, it's clawed back by Courtois. Guy actually spins after leaving Courtois' arm. The contact of Courtois actually made the ball spin and it holds up on the line. Incredible. What a save that is! He puts backspin on it, and it doesn't go over that line. Just enough on it from Thibaut Courtois, and the ball put the brakes on. There's a relieved Chelsea goalkeeper and coach. Antonio Conte is aged five years this afternoon. Hazard. Holds off Ericsson. Fabregas. Matic. What is it about this stadium that just brings out the great goals in players? This Wembley Stadium. Cross comes David Luiz. And then Kudus done his best to try and liven up Spurs down the left, but it's not going to be enough. Four minutes of injury time played. And he's done that a number of times, David Luiz, leaving his central role, tidying things up. And he's not going to make any mistakes with that. That's going as high and as wide into the crowd as could be to run the clock down. The whistle that brings loud Chelsea cheers. Antonio Conte's Premier League table toppers get the better of their challengers in the FA Cup semi-final to book their date back here at the end of next month, maybe by then, with the title won. And if you're going to win a cup tie, Clive Allen, win it with a strike like the one we saw from Nemanja Matic. Oh, it's a match-winning strike and it's a sensational goal, but the introduction of Hazard certainly made the difference on the hour. Conte got it right. Chelsea picked the game up by the scruff of the neck. It was a magnificent FA Cup semi-final. Chelsea now return for the final. In the league, the tussle goes on. In the FA Cup, it's Chelsea who will face either Manchester City or Arsenal in a final that could be one to save a two. Blue is the colour of Wembley today. Chelsea four, Tottenham two.